Hi, welcome again to Hell. Uh, we are now in Canto uh, 11 of Dante, and uh, this um, begins a kind of a, um, a narrative pause. Uh, we're halfway now through the uh, circles of Hell, and so Dante um, steps back, has Virgil step back and uh, tell us about the uh, arrangement of, uh, of hell, the structure of, uh, of hell. He'll do the same thing in the pur Purgatorio, uh, where he will, he will go halfway through before he explains uh, the, different, uh, the different circles. We reached the curving brink. This is, we're starting with the opening line. We reached the curving brink of a steep bank constructed of enormous broken rocks. We're going to see even more uh, brokenness uh, and we'll find an explanation for the breaks in the walls of hell. Constructed of enormous broken rocks below us, a crueler den of pain and the disgusting overflow of stench. The deep abyss was vomiting, forced us back from the edge. They have to stop and adjust to the, uh, uh, to the stench. Uh, and then in the meantime, Virgil explains uh, the next three circles. My son, within these boulders bounds are three more circles, tre uh, cercetti, uh, the, uh, um, using the, uh, the diminutive for uh, uh, the word for uh, circle, uh, because the spiral is getting smaller as we go down, down, down. Uh, these circles are, um, are tightening up. Uh, all tightly packed with souls, and so that later the sight of them alone will be enough. I'll tell you how and why they are imprisoned. All malice has injustice as its end. Now they're into the uh, uh, the sin of malitia, malice, and the reason that is worse than the sins of incontinence that we've just gone through is that um, the uh, th there's somebody else that's harmed by malice. Uh, sins of incontinence harm uh, ourselves, uh, but uh, but these are uh, are sins with social impact, with uh, uh, harming others. Uh, the first of the circles below are all the violent, and there are three kinds of violence: violence to God, violence to self, and violence to neighbor. So there are subdivisions of the next. Uh, circle. By violent means, a man can kill his neighbor. That's the one kind of violence. Uh, line 40. Man can raise violent hands against himself. Okay, uh, that is uh, the second kind of violence. And then 46. One can use violence against the deity by heartfelt disbelief and cursing him or by despising nature and God's bounty. So, um, hating nature uh, and uh, not being um, happy for one's blessings uh, 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 can, in, in, in fact, is a form of violence and is a form of atheism, okay, is a form of um, disbelief. Uh, Dante asks then, all of those sinners in uh, circles two through five uh, that we've just gone through, why are they not in the city of Dis? And um, da, uh, Virgil explains, line 76, Why do you let your thoughts stray from the path they are accustomed to? Or have I missed the point you have in mind? Have you forgotten how you your ethics read? Aristotle's ethics, the Nicomachean ethics, again, is what he had in mind. Those terms, it explicates in such detail the three conditions that the heavens hate. And these are uh, acrasia, incontinence, was, uh, acrasia was... Uh, uh, Aristotle's uh, term, uh, which um, Cicero in De Officius uh, translates incontinentia, so incontinence. Okay, cacia, uh, uh, which becomes in Latin malitia, malice, uh, and finally uh, theristos, which is um, uh, bestialis, uh, bestiality. Uh, do you not remember how incontinence offends God least and merits the least blame? Now, of course, uh, uh, keep in mind that this is a relative statement. That doesn't mean that, that incontinence is not uh, offensive to God, but less so than the other uh, sins that are mentioned. Um, 
So that is uh, uh, the answer via Aristotle is that these sins are less uh, displeasing to God. Uh, so they descend to the next level. They're going into the seventh circle then at the beginning of Canto 12. Um, and Ch Canto 7 is going to be divided, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the seventh circle is going to be divided uh, uh, into smaller spirals known as Gerone. Uh, and so they're, we're going to have a subdivision here of all the different kinds of malice, all the different kinds of uh, violence against uh, others and then the self and then uh, God. Uh, so they descend and they see um, signs, Dante notices signs of a rock slide, a landslide. Uh, and um, Dante refers to a specific uh, landslide, landslide in Trent, and he, he compares this rock slide to that. Like the ruins this side of Trent left by the landslide, an earthquake or erosion must have caused it, uh, hit the Adige on its left bank. Uh, so was the slope of our ravine's formation, another epic simile. Uh, at the entrance to this um, level uh, is, uh, now we're going to start to see uh, mythological creatures that uh, no longer exist in our world. Uh, they're all in, uh, in hell, uh, including uh, l'infamia di Crete, the infamy of Crete. He doesn't even want to name uh, the Minotaur, this half bull, half, uh, half man, uh, because of the disgusting origin of the, uh, of the Minotaur. So Virgil drives off the Minotaur and uh, then explains where this rock slide has come from. Um, Now let me tell you, here's the explanation, line 34, that the other time I came down to the lower part of hell, this rock had not then fallen into ruins. So that was at a time before, well, let's, let's read the next lines. But certainly, if I remember well, it was just before the coming of that one who took from hell's first circle the great spoil. So who is it that took all of the, uh, the souls out of hell? Well, nobody ever gets out of hell. Uh, but at one time, there were people in hell that are not there anymore. Okay. So, uh, so who would be that one? Well, of course, uh, we're talking about the harrowing of hell. We're talking about the descent into uh, uh, to hell, freeing those uh, virtuous uh, souls who uh, died before Christ. And so... Uh, they could not have the fullness of the resurrection without Christ, uh, until Christ's time. And so then he frees uh, all of those souls from their uh, uh, suffering. Um, and uh, so now, of course, um, we'll see Virgil talking in this uh, circumlocution like this, kind of talking around uh, um, when, he, when he refers to Yahweh, he refers to uh, heaven's great emperor. He always puts it in Roman terms that he can, can think of. So he, uh, and since he existed before Christianity, he doesn't have the Christian language uh, for, um, for Christian things, for, including Christ. And so uh, he speaks in this kind of circular uh, way. That this abyss of stench, hell, from top to bottom began to shake, line 40. So I thought the universe felt love. When this shuddering comes, uh, and it's destructive, and all the, the rocks are falling, and so uh, we don't normally think when something like that happens in the natural world, uh, we, we think uh, of hellish things. We think of scary things. But Virgil says the movement is one of love, okay, because, uh, which of course it is. Uh, love is going to be the motive force of the entire universe for Dante. And so he's, this is a great love poem. Dante uh, spent his early life uh, as a poet of the uh, Dolce Stil Nuovo um, writing about love in a much more um, circumscribed uh, fashion that is uh, romantic love, erotic love, uh, 
but now he is going to write about, this is another great love poem, and uh, uh, hell is filled with people with insufficient love, people or people who could not love properly. Uh, the proper way to love is what uh, Dante will learn through progressing through um, purgatory and eventually to uh, Paradiso. Uh, so now they see these rivers of blood, line 46. But now look down the valley. Coming closer you will see the river of blood that boils the souls of those who through their violence injured others. Uh, and just as we saw the um, Minotaur, uh, the infamy of Crete, now we see the centaurs romping. Um, and uh, one of the centaurs calls out, notices that, uh, that Dante is a living soul. You there! On your way down here, what torture are you seeking? Speak where you stand. If not, I draw my bow. The uh, um, the centaurs are very territorial, and so they're, uh, this one threatens. Uh, this is Chiron threatening. Uh, now he's he's the great bowmaster. He taught uh, uh, Heracles. No, I, I'm sorry. He taught Heracles something else. Um, uh, then my master shouted back, our answer we will give to Chiron when we're on his side. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is a different uh, centaur, not Chiron. For I see you are as rash as ever. This is Nessus. Chiron's a good centaur. Uh, uh, he was a tutor of many of the heroes. Uh, but Nessus was an evil centaur, actually caused the death of uh, Heracles. Um, so he points out uh, Nessus, uh, Chiron, Pholus, another famous centaur. Um, and Chiron is the one who realizes that Dante is alive. Have you no? And he's surprised. And um, uh, Dante uses a technique here uh, that is, uh, it, it doesn't get a name really until uh, the 20th century. The, uh, the Russian formalist uh, Viktor Shklovsky uh, calls this technique ostrenenyi, which is uh, um, Russian for uh, estrangement. Uh, the... Uh, the English um, uh, uh, the English term that uh, the English translation that is is most used for that term is defamiliarization, where you we, you strip away the veil of familiarity, uh, uh, and so the technique works like this. Uh, now, to some extent, the what I've just described the 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 way that uh, Virgil talks around. Uh, Christ, any references to Christ, uh, is an example of that, because he would not know Christ. But something that um, is uh, familiar to us, but would be unfamiliar to the denizens of hell. Uh, and so they describe, they describe it in, in wonder. You know, we would be amazed if, um, if somebody uh, was walking across a lawn and did not bend a blade of grass. I mean, that would be amazing to us. But that's what they would expect in hell, right? Because in hell, the, the denizens of hell have no physical form, have no weight uh, at all. And so, um, so uh, consequently, you know, if you walk up to something, you would pass right through it, just the way Casper does in, uh, in all the cool Casper cartoons, okay? Um, but they're amazed to see Dante because he walks up to things and bumps into them and knocks them out of the way. Line 70, uh, well, I guess line 80. Have you noticed how the one behind moves everything he touches? That is so weird. He, he, uh, uh, he, he touches a rock and it moves instead of allowing his hand to pass through it. That is so weird. Uh, so this is, that's the, the defamiliarization. And we'll, we'll find this technique used a lot in hell because, you know, after all, uh, hell is different from, um, well, it's not different from every place. I mean, it's like, like pretty much like Vegas. Uh, but, it, but other cities, it, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very much unlike the city of Dis. Uh, is unlike, uh, uh, I keep thinking of examples that, that don't work very well. I was going to say Chicago, but, uh, 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 well, no, let's uh, let's be fair here. Um, so uh, uh, Virgil asks Chiron for a uh, a centaur to guide them, and Chiron app uh, appoints Nessus, uh, and Nessus starts explaining the river 
Uh, the river of blood is because of tyrants. Tyrants kill so many people because they don't care. Uh, uh, these are the tyrants who dealt in bloodshed and plundered wealth. Uh, so that is violence against others. Uh, and he starts introducing, Nessus does, uh, introducing the tyrants uh, by name. Uh, line 119, there stands the one who in God's keep murdered the heart, still dripping blood from the Thames. Okay, um, a direct uh, uh, reference to um, uh, well, this is this is Richard, but who would be the uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, the princes, uh, the young princes who were in his uh, uh, in his keeping. Uh, Richard the third um, and uh, I just said he names them but uh, he, he he doesn't he's uh, he, he's speaking specifically uh, but then he does mention Pyrrhus and Sextus and Attila uh, Attila the Hun uh, and uh, uh, at least that's what his wife called him his wife called him Hun um, and uh, uh, so that brings us to the end alas uh, it's always such a disappointment when you and I uh, come to an ending like this, uh, even though I'm consoled by the fact that uh, I'll see you again uh, on Friday in class. But uh, uh, nevertheless, it's such a, a bittersweet time. Uh, and so I, I guess the best that I can do is to, uh, to give you a benediction, give you a blessing, and uh, um, We'll see you in class, okay? Well, thank you for this romp through hell. Uh, thank you for joining uh, me for this. And uh, uh, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you on Friday.